Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, Benchmade releases four new beautiful custom kitchen knives. Uh, I have another really awesome knife from Monterey Bay Knives on loan to me. I hope to make it my very own. And uh, and then we go over five knife groupings. And these are knife groupings uh, for you have to leave your house and you don't know if or when you will return. But I have five different categories for that. And they, uh, as usual, kind of fall down a more aesthetic uh, uh, path. But we'll talk about that in just a minute. First, let's do a pocket check. All right. So as uh, fall is closing in, fall is here. What am I talking about? Closing in. I mean, I have to go out and rake. I'm in denial. Uh, but as fall is here, I've been carrying slip joint knives. And so today I'm going to show off the one I was carrying today. I used it quite a bit. And um, so it's very rare that I show my secondary knife first. But today I will make an exception. Uh, carrying the number 48 Great Eastern Cutlery Improved Trapper. So like all trappers, it's about four and a quarter inches long closed. Uh, it has this nice California clip point blade with that real long clip. And uh, it's nice and slender, very sharp, uh, very slicey. But what makes this an improved trapper, at least according to Great Eastern Cutlery, is that instead of a spay blade, they give you a very nice Warncliffe blade. Uh, this is a knife that I had my eye on um, at, uh, what, it, what was it, uh, Knives Ship Free and CollectorKnives.net for a long time, and they seem to not sell very quickly. So uh, this was 2017. I had an opportunity uh, to sit on it and wait. Now you just have to snap it up immediately and then decide later if you like it for Great Eastern Cutlery. But with this, uh, I've really grown to love it. This is the, uh, and by grown to love it, I mean, uh, usually for slip joints, I prefer something a little bit smaller, oddly enough. Uh, but this one just kind of flies under the radar as very carryable. Uh, I was carrying this all day without a pocket clip, uh, slip. However, I had nothing else in the pocket. I didn't want it to get dinged up and stuff like that, but I uh, didn't want the big bulky leather slip. And, you know, leather slips aren't that bulky, so that lets you know how nicely this carries. This is called a green pickle bone, a uh, jigged green pickle bone cover. Love it. Uh, my uh, primary knife today in my front right hand pocket was my new Hinderer Eclipse. This is the one I traded the uh, Medford Praetorian for. And uh, I love that Praetorian. It is a great knife, very sharp and very, very well made, but I just never carry it never ever carried it so i decided uh i would sell it and in doing so i was offered this trade uh for something that would be like something i would have bought with the proceeds anyway so i went for the trade and that uh, this is the hinderer eclipse tanto this is a pre triway pivot example uh so the flipping takes a little bit of juice you got to, you know, put preload it as uh, some people are fond of saying, but instead of just trying to just flip it, you got to preload your finger and the uh, flipper tab with a little bit of energy and then flip it. It flips out. I don't know. It's a feel thing. <laughs> you, you'll get it. I don't know. Maybe some of uh, you younger listeners who are spoiled with ceramic bearings everywhere they turn. Maybe you wouldn't know about loading up, uh, preloading with energy, uh, the flipper tab. But anyway, this is an older hinderer, older meaning pre triway And all of my five now five hinderers are um, pre triway except for one. And I like it, but I got to say, I like these old ones. So if you have any old hinderers that are pre triway that are just bumming you out because they don't have uh, bearings let me know i'll buy it uh, i'll buy it from you for pennies on the dollar let me know 
So yeah, this is what I've been carrying. I love, by the way, that very long fronted Tanto, Americanized Tanto. It works really well. And this knife, though thick behind the edge, like most hinderers are, is very sharp and cutty. I hate to use that, that word. Is that even a word? Uh, but cuts very well. I don't know about slice. I haven't taken this to a, a wedge of cheddar yet, but I have a feeling it would do just fine today. Let me know. Call the listener line 724-466-4487 uh, and, and leave a voice comment or do it right below in the uh, in the notes here. Send me an email, whatever it is. Let me know what you're carrying. Uh, it, it, it always fascinates and impresses me, uh, the taste that my listeners have. Uh, always have a lot of cool knives. And I think maybe because my taste is varied, your taste is very varied. I get a lot of people who uh, carry uh, one or more fixed blade knives uh, every day. So let me know what you're carrying. I am interested. Uh, that's 724-466-4487 uh, or just email me or leave something in the comments. Okay. So as you know, here at the Knife Junkie podcast, we have a Patreon page, Patreon account, where uh, people who appreciate the content we put out can go and help support the show by either joining at the $3 uh, traditional junkie level, the $5 tactical junkie level, or the $10 gentleman junkie level. And at each level, you get your name mentioned on the podcast. Uh, like this week, Sean M is a gentleman junkie shop. Excuse me, Sean M. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Sean M is a, a regular contributor to Thursday Night Knives, uh, watching, commenting, being a part of the conversation. And uh, it became valuable enough to him to join as a gentleman junkie. So thank you so much, Sean M. It is a pleasure to have you aboard, sir. Um, so as a gentleman junkie, he gets everything everyone else gets at the traditional and the uh, and the. Uh, tactical junkie level, uh, plus a couple more things. Uh, but as extras, you get a, um, a weekly, um, what do you want to call it? Extras from the interviews. After we cut the interview, uh, we seem to have really good conversations. So we've begun recording those and putting them out as extras. You get a sticker, you get mentioned on the podcast. And then as at the gentleman junkie level, what do you get? You also get enrolled in enrolled. You get uh, matriculated into the monthly knife giveaway. This month we have this fantastic knife. This is the Finch Devil's Finger, and uh, I'm very excited to to give this one away. I love Finch knives, as you know from watching this channel. Uh, I have a collection of five so far. I would like to have a collection of all, but that's just me being greedy. Um, I love their designs. I love the builds. I mean, they are great knives, great fidgeting knives, great user knives. But they build this whole identity around each knife. And each knife is designed um, and, and well, has a logo designed with it, comes with a sticker, its own artwork, its own sort of story. And the stories are often um, uh, kind of retro in feel. And I really like that. Uh, you know, and for this one, the Devil's Finger, you uh, I don't have the box around me, but it comes in a cool box with a great sticker of an old school kind of devil, almost looks like a tattoo devil. And uh, so and anyway, this is a great knife. This is 154 CM uh, red canvas micarta. The one that you will be getting if you enter the uh, Gentleman Junkie monthly knife giveaway, which this month will be October 21st, Thursday, you will be getting green canvas micarta, like a British racing green canvas micarta with a blackened 154 CM blade. The one you see before you is mine. This is not the one you will be winning. This has red and a, uh, a sort of machine, machine satin slash stone wash on the flats, uh, 154 CM, my favorite blade steel, by the way, all around. Uh, so excellent knife. Please join us. Help us out on Patreon. The quickest way to go there uh, and to become a part of the Patreon uh, team. No, 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 no. The Patreon group is uh, theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, I'll say that again. It's theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Got a question or comment? Call the Knife Junkies listener line at 724-466-4487. 
Uh, it's rare that I'll say this, but I'm really excited about these next four Benchmade releases. Uh, they have a line of kitchen knives that has just grown by four. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this uh, because you can only get them directly from Benchmade and directly from their custom shop, I guess you'd call it, which to me is immediately cool because each one is going to be slightly different. Each one is going to be uh, the most customized to the user's preferences. So you can get these knives in, um, these kitchen knives in either 440C or you can up it a little bit to 154 cm and uh what what a cool set of options there for for kitchen knives now they come in a set of three uh, which um you know if you, there's one that you can buy separately but if you want any of the others you get them in a set of three and it's a paring knife a utility knife and an eight inch chef's knife and then there's this one and this is the one that Wow, I think is beautiful. First of all, look at the handles. The handle scales are really nice, uh, multicolored G10 and uh, sort of earth tones. You've got like a, a burnt umber in the back and sort of a, a light, I don't know, ochre up front. Beautiful uh, handle combination. And it's going to feel good in hand. It's going to grip well in a wet sort of kitchen environment. But look at that blade. What a beautiful blade. They, they're calling it a Santoku. Uh, but to me, I'm calling that a sax. That is a sax kitchen knife. And I really like it. Uh, Eight inch, uh, I like, I, I prefer a 10 inch kitchen, you know, chef's knife, but eight inch will do in a pinch for sure. And um, one thing I really like about this, if you're looking at it, you can see that the ratio of the broadness of the blade to the length of the blade is pretty close. Uh, I would say maybe two to three almost, uh, but that's an eight inch long blade. That's a pretty decently, so what I'm trying to get at here, the blade is very wide. And if you're in a cutting situation in the kitchen, you want to be able to span, say, a carrot or asparagus or something like that. So that eight inch of uh, sort of gently curved cutting edge is most welcome. But so is that very, very wide blade, because after you're done cutting all this stuff up, you can scoop it all up on the width of that on that wide blade drop it in your pan, drop it in whatever you're, you're cooking. So it, it looks like it doubles as a very sharp, it's almost cleavery. It's almost cleavery, uh, long and sharp, but also very broad so that you can scoop a lot of cut ingredients up on it, psh, drop it in. the. So I really, really like this one. Uh, probably my favorite of the, of the, uh, four, but, uh, you can get it in, um, the regular sort of westernized uh, uh, kitchen shapes as well with that same beautiful uh, uh, bitone handle there. Uh, the station knife, that's what it's called. The sax, the one that I'm calling the sax is actually called the station knife. So definitely uh, check that out. I'm, I'm not usually over the moon about uh, Benchmade, but when I am, I definitely like to trumpet that because, you know, they're one of our great companies. They're made right here in the States and, you know, but who doesn't need to up their kitchen cutting game? I know I do. I've had the same knives for almost 14 years. So there you go. All right. So next up, I want to talk about uh, Blade Show West. Just for a quick second, I just wanted to make mention of the winners of Blade Show West. Um, if you go and you look at uh, knife news, you'll see their featured image is of that absolutely beautiful Terzuola designed Civivi made Tamashi. -e. I'm calling that's what I'm calling it Tamashi. -e. Two eyes at the end, I think you pronounce them both. And uh, what a beautiful fixed blade knife. And I'm not just saying that uh, because my eyes enjoy uh, gazing upon its lines, but at Blade Show East, I had an opportunity to pick this thing up. And it feels great in hand, and it's a you know it's ground it's a Civivi ground knife, so it's very thin, mm. expertly beautifully ground, and uh, so it looks like an all around outstanding knife. But another thing I really like about it is that it comes in an excellent Kydex sheath that has a minimal footprint. So, uh, but it is a I, I, it's not a taco style. It is a, still a pancake style, but it doesn't take up a whole bunch of room you know um so 
you know, a knife, uh, a fixed blade knife oftentimes is only as good as its carry system. And in this case, um, it looks like it's going to carry beautifully from what I checked out at Blade Show. A uh, couple of other winners. So so this, the Tamashi E uh, from Savibi and uh, Bob Terzuola won Best Tactical Knife in the production um production category best hunter in the production category went to bradford knives the guardian four uh best knife uh, best big knife went to bradford knives cpm rex 45 fillet knife so bradford knives cleaning up those are great knives for sure best folder protect custom malibu i could have guessed that i guess uh best edc monterey bay knives slayback awesome awesome knife have one of those right here on loan to me from Lefty EDC, awesome knife. And then best in show, Savivi Tamashi. E. Uh, also, I'll mention in the custom line, best folder went to Mike Tyre, uh, best Damascus, Mike Schindel for a uh, Merovingian sword. Um, Luke Swenson won best slip joint, best EDC, Tobin Hill, best chef's knife, fell knives, best hunter, Mike Schindel uh, for his integral bolster knife. Best in show, Mike Tyre. And then best feast uh, was the Tamashi E. -E, -E. <laughs> that was like four extra E's. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, Savivi. That Savivi knife is pretty cool. And Bob Terzuola. Who doesn't think he's not only super cool, but designing just the coolest knives ever. Love that man. All right. So uh, you know what I mean. So here we are. Uh, right uh, still to come in the state of the collection, we're going to take a look at another Monterey Bay knife and a quick uh, knife storage solution. And then I want to take a look at five knife groupings for leaving the house and not sure if you're coming back. Five different scenarios right coming up right here. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So last week, I gushed poetic about this knife this is the uh, monterey bay knives slayback and this knife this is the uh monterey bay knives sprocket designed by uh, jerry mcginnis uh, the slayback designed by ray laconico two just really outstanding knives that i've always had my eye on lefty edc a friend of the channel and just a great ed edc uh, and video knife producer knife video producer out there uh Loan me these very generously. Thank you, sir. And then um, he also organized uh, through uh, Sanford Owen of Monterey Bay Knives that I should be able to check out this. This is the uh, Peter Carey designed Turbo, also by Monterey Bay Knives. And uh, it is like the Slayback, a liner lock. So, so it's a full titanium liner lock not something you see that frequently um but oh man i oh i just i just shaved a little bit of my thumb off closing this knife okay uh this is m390 and uh contoured titanium beautifully contoured has the feel almost like i gotta be totally honest almost like an early kaiser you know how they were thing when they first came out with the um with the uh uh Oh, who was um ah it, it will come to me but when they when they first started uh kaiser first started producing their uh frame locks they were uh contouring them like this and just feel really good in the hand and that's kind of what we get here but we have sort of pr proprietary pivots i mean that works on a on a torx but it's a really nice looking pivot on both sides you've got a really really nicely lightened out uh, titanium slab on this side, uh, also lightened out on this side where there's room uh, back towards the clip and uh, really great ceramic caged uh, bearing action on this and just a beautiful design from Peter Carey. Uh, Peter Carey is a really great guy. Had him on the podcast, uh, say about 15 podcasts back. Uh, really great guy, uh, kind of a stalwart in the um, custom tactical uh, world. He's had some designs made by Spyderco, um, but this one from Monterey Bay Knives just takes the cake. And I am hoping, I'm going to say it right here, I am hoping that since this is sold out, but uh, 
possession is nine tenths of the law. I am hoping that Sanford Owen of Monterey Bay Knives will be willing to part with this knife and just leave it in my hands for whatever sum he chooses uh, at or below the retail price. And uh, I would love to make this mine. I, it would mean a lot to me because I had a great conversation with Sanford Owen. I had a great conversation with Peter Carey. And this is a of a titanium flipper that I would carry a lot, I believe. So anyway, I really, really uh, like this knife. I love the shape of it. I love this blade with a, it's a almost like looks a bit bayonetti. You know, it's got that nice big swedge on the top running about half, half the length of that blade in just incredibly smooth action that you can only get from a liner lock because Never at any point am I exerting any pressure on the lock bar uh, like I would be on a frame lock. So I just really dig this knife. So I'll send this little section to Sanford Owen and, and, and say, please, sir, please, sir, may I have it? May I have it for whatever sum you choose? All right. So that's the Monterey Bay Knives Turbo. Uh, designed by Peter Carey. And then these are the other two Monterey Bay knives that I will be making videos th of this week. And then I will getting be getting them back to you, Lefty EDC. Thank you so much for your generosity, sir. Okay, so yesterday I had uh, I had a really nice afternoon with my daughter just running, running around doing errands. I like that kind of thing. I get to listen to whatever music uh, my girls are into at the time. That's a good way to monitor the culture through their ears, if you will. And, uh, and we just chit chat and drive around and get stuff done. Part of that was going to the cigar shop yesterday. Uh, so she's a good sport. She goes into the cigar shop, even though she doesn't like the smell and whoops, <laughs> sorry about that. And, uh, after I pick out a couple of cigars, I, I've been liking these temperance cigars recently. So I got a couple of those. And then I discovered you can buy uh, cigar boxes from them. And so I picked up uh, a couple for my daughter. She can put knickknacks in or whatever. And uh, her girly knickknacks. But for me, I'm going to put my boy knickknacks in. And uh, so I got this really, really cool uh, cigar box. I wanted to show it off. Two bucks. I'm sure you have a cigar shop in your area that will do the same. You know, they don't want to throw them out, but, you know, they don't really have a market for them. So this is what I got. Uh, I really like this because it has this cool illustration on the lid there. And then now I have a place for my camp knives. These are all of my um, camp knives that feature a bale, for instance. And then they all have a spear point primary. Uh, they all have a cap lifter, screwdriver. They all have some sort of can opener. This is definitely an, an interesting and odd one. This is an old one that my grandpa gave me. And then they all have a punch or all. So that's, that's what I have in this box here. And so it's sort of a sub collection of my slip joints, which as I mentioned earlier, I am now kind of going, getting back into as the seasons change. Um, the only one that isn't a camp knife here is this electrician's knife, which these are so cool. These old electrician's knives, they have a spear point main blade, and then they have, well, that's, this one has a half stop, which is nice, but then they have a locking screwdriver slash wire stripper, um, you know, electrician's tool up here it has a, a, a locking liner here that you just move out of the way like like your ordinary liner lock and close up so that's uh it's a it's a good low cost storage solution i generally don't like the word solution uh this one is pretty shallow but you can get uh, deeper fatter boxes in wood and cardboard uh my daughter got two that were in a real nice thick wood a lot a lot of them are made out of cedar which is just very pleasing to me. I have some of my older little small pocket knives over here too. So, um, well, just a suggestion. If you need something to put some, uh, you know, 
to to sort of separate out sub collections or uh, you know your EDC gear stuff like this. Think about your local cigar shop and all the cool little cedar boxes with the little clasps and the artwork. You can go by there, buy a cigar, pay three bucks and get some cool little box to put your knives in. Something to think about. Anyway, uh, so that's uh, that's my new latest and greatest most exciting thing uh, on my desk here because. On my desk here, I always have a bunch of knives, but I have a little a little partitioned box full of my Rough Riders. Now this is a, a little extra box with my camp knives. All right, I'm nerding out. Sorry, sorry. Let's get to the main feature of today's show, and that is five knife groupings. Now, this idea is sort of an amalgamation of, of an idea I had, but uh, also fed by an idea that a patron had, I believe, or a commenter, sorry. If I'm not remembering exactly at the moment, but uh, what would you carry if you were leaving the house and you weren't sure if you were going to return? And I thought, oh, oh, that's a good, uh, you know, that requires more than one category because we can't just have one. That would be a that would be too quick and and wouldn't allow for the most uh, broad selection of knives. And then I thought, okay, so what are the rules to this? Okay, the rules are. Um, you're assuming that in this scenario, you're leaving the house and you're not sure if you're ever coming back, that you already have a tomahawk packed. So something like this or something like this, you know you have a tomahawk sort of hatchet ax kind of thing. So this, this isn't a consideration or a worry. And then you also have, you also have um, your Swiss army knives and your Leatherman. They're already there. They're taken care of. So you don't have to include this. The, these are just knives. Uh, so we can be, you know, focused in our conversation here. All right. So for the first pairing of knives that I would uh, happily leave and not sure if I was going to come back with. Now, this is one that gets a lot of use, a lot of actual use uh, in real time. And uh, portions of this have changed throughout uh, time. But for the past, say, four or five road trips, it's held steady to this. So I'm going to consider this my number one option, and I'm going to call it my road trip option. So my road trip pairing, that is, I'm going on a road trip, not sure if I'm ever returning, uh, goes like this. Always in the pocket is the Microtech SOCOM Elite. This one is from 2012, March of 2012. So it has my absolute favorite Tanto grind. Uh, that Microtech has ever done on it. Love that grind. Beautiful shape and grind. It's got the aluminum handles with the uh, carbon fiber inlays. Has a uh, an interesting weight to it. It is it is centered like a fixed blade fighting knife exactly at the pivot. So it's blade lively uh, if you need to fight with it. Uh, the only problem is if you need to fight with it and you have it in reverse grip, you're going to you're going to run into the one reason why I carry this on every road trip, which is the glass breaker. This was the first knife I ever had with a glass breaker, believe it or not. So this has always been my road trip knife because I, on said road trip, I flip the car and I need to break out or for whatever reason I need to break out with this glass breaker. So every time I take a road trip, this is in my pocket. Uh, so for grouping one road trip grouping, the realistic grouping, uh, that is my front right pocket on my, uh, front right three o'clock, or I guess just my three o'clock in the waistband is this knife for truck stops and for dangerous areas I may encounter. Uh, this is my Kramer custom knives voodoo. Uh, by the way, here's just a little thing. Great sheath. And the way he stacks the grommets here so that you can uh, perfectly vertically mount a, um, uh, a carry system instead of having it follow the contours of the blade. Very, very well done. I really like Eric Kramer's knives and I want to get others. Uh, so, but this one right here, this is the custom voodoo. It's a Persian sort of Persian slash clip point blade with a nice big thumb swale and a double edge. Asked him to double edge this, and uh, he obliged. It's very thin, and uh, if you like to wear um, knives in the waistband, but it's you know January third, and you're driving home from 
uh, a month of partying and excessive eating, and uh, you have a spare tire, but you still like to wear knives in the waistband, this is the one for you, man. It's very thin, uh, very thin, but offers an outstanding grip due to the contours and the width of the handle. So there's that. And then uh, always in my backpack next to, you know, other, you know, my first aid kit and other backpacky like things is this knife, the Prather War Bowie from Tops. Um, just a slab, a quarter inch slab of 1095, uh, beautifully ground, very sharp, very robust, slicey, slashy, survivally fighty. Everything about this knife is, uh, it's a do everything knife. Uh, really, this could make an excellent camp knife. It would make an excellent fighting knife. It would make an excellent combat knife, meaning something that you go from prying uh, uh, ammo crate lids off with to uh, squaring off to cutting up a boar that you've that you've killed in the bush that you're going to eat, <laughs> like in uh, uh, oh, what's that movie? Anyway, sorry. Uh, senior moment there, but yeah, th so this is the first carry combo and this is one that gets a lot of use. This is my road trip uh, triumvirate, always including the tops, Prather War Bowie, uh, the frequently, well, ever since I got it, so maybe the last four or five road trips uh, has been with the Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo for its thin capability and then, and then just out of tradition and that glass breaker the Microtech SOCOM Elite. So that is number one. That is a uh, carry combo number one for the Great Escape. That's what I should have titled it. Something, something a little snappier, a little snazzier. All right. So next is the camping or survival. Now, this is kind of no nonsense. This is probably, um, I got to be honest, all in all, this is probably the best all around tool setup. And what I mean is like, really, this is, I guess why I'm calling it the camping slash survival is that you've got in your front right pocket, you've got the AD20 from Cold Steel, uh, one of the signature designs by the great and powerful uh, Andrew Demko. Look at that. What a, what a beautiful knife. This was the first production run that Cold Steel did of the AD20. So I lucked out and got the hollow ground version of it, which no doubt would be just about as robust out in the field as the flat ground, though I do understand a flat ground blade has some um, inherent strength to it just due to its geometry. But still, I have no doubt that the hollow ground is no slouch because I've used this a lot in my back 40. That's 40 yards by 40 yards, by the way. So first would be the 80, uh, 80, 10, uh, by cold steel, uh, for in this survival slash camping situation. Next, the sort of medium fixed blade. These are all kind of following this, this sort of, uh, pattern. The next is a medium fixed blade knife, and it comes in the only nylon sheath that I actually respect and like, and that is the Ritter Hogue. RSK, that stands for Ritter Survival Knife Mark III. This thing is S45VN. It is uh, an ergonomic masterpiece. It just, it, it, it feels good in the hand like Beethoven feels good to the ear. And then you've got this real broad-shaped blade that is uh, saber ground, we'll say, but or, or high flat grind. Um, broad shape so it's nice and thin and slicey behind the edge uh but still a robust sort of uh, blade thickness a great great all-arounder yes yes this is an outstanding camp knife this is an outstanding do everything outdoors knife but you could also flex that into a pretty good fighting knife too because of that grip and also the sharpness of the blade. So what's the big blade that I would include in this camping and survival pairing or grouping for walking out the door and not sure if you're ever coming back? That would be this. This is a custom sheath. Don't remember who made it. Got it a long time ago. But the knife is the RTAC 2 
by Ontario Knife and Tool. This is sort of the uh, precursor to the uh, Essie Hunglis. And uh, I'm not sure if they still make them under the Ontario uh, Rat or the Ontario um, Artac 2 name. But uh, just a really great, great knife. Uh, it's a 10-inch long blade. You've got these giant slabs of canvas micarta. Uh, you can see my, my funk on there, which I love. Uh, you know, just through use. This thing has gotten a lot of use. And uh, it's been patinaed. And um, just a great knife. This is 1095 steel. It's a springy kind of steel, uh, at least in this case, the way they the way they heat treated this funny story about this knife. My brother bought the SE Hunglis, which is basically the same thing with a couple of updates and buried it deep in his calf. Vic, if you're listening, uh, you're legendary for that. I shouldn't say you're legendary for that. You're legendary for other things, but I, I will always remember you burying this knife in your calf because I can see exactly. I know just in the story, how you painted it. I know exactly how it happened, and I know that moment where you don't feel anything, but you're seeing what you're seeing. And you're seeing this big 1095 sharpened slab deep in your leg, and you think, this is going to hurt in just a second, and this is going to start gushing in three, two, one, boom. And then it happens in the throb, and it's like, honey, get me to the hospital. Or, or tell your mother-in-law to drive me to the hospital. I, I think the mother-in-law was involved in that story too, which I love. All right. So anyway, this is my outdoor, my camping, my survival uh, lineup. It is the Cold Steel 8010, in this case, Hollow Ground. It is the Mark III uh, by uh, Rogue and, uh, I mean, Hogue and Ritter. And then it is the Ontario Artac II, a, a giant uh, of outdoor and camp knives in general. Uh, so that is number two. Now, number three is a kind of a nostalgic one. I was like, what? so what, what would my answer be if this were a different time? You know, pre-G10, pre-Super oh, Steel, you know? What, what would my answer be in the, in the old days if this, if, you know? A classic line. You get it. It's it's the old school setup. Okay. And what does it include? Stand by while I pull it over here. All right. So first, so this is my old school leaving home. Not sure if I'm coming back, uh, but it's say 1962 or 1957 or sometime like way before now, um, but maybe in some of your lifetimes. Um who knows? Maybe even 1970. Let's see. All right. So the first knife, the knife that I would carry is my folder. We all know what it's going to be. You're, you're now you're shouting at the screen or you're shouting at the radio and you're shouting this. Yes, it would be a buck 110. I would have it on my belt, on my big, thick leather belt, and I would have this, except it would not be a 20... 2008 version it would be a whatever 1950s version but it would look very 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 much like this so just a great 3.75 inch clip point blade uh 420 super steel at the time right 420 hc super steel on this and uh just a very 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 keen blade hollow ground i mean so nice people don't talk about how beautifully ground this is the 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 110 is just awesome. Or maybe they do, and I just don't listen. Um, but you've got the nice heavy brass uh, brass bolsters. So back in the day, you really knew this was quality by how heavy it was. You know, you've got the wood. I think back at this time, this would have been ebony. This is, in this case, diamond wood, which is sort of layered and compressed, kind of like a wood G10 or wood micarta. And... Uh, just that classic, classic look. This would be my uh, my folder, of course. I, I'm, I'm going to feature this because instead of a clip, it would be 
on my belt on that thing. Okay, next, my medium fixed blade knife for around the camp and just for doing chores and something you would have on your belt uh, on the other side from your buck 110 or maybe right next to it from dusk till dawn or dawn till dusk, you know, uh, bef you know, before you turn in would be this knife. This, in this case, this is the Bark River Knives version of this knife, but this is the Boone 2. And what is it? It's a classic uh, six inch belt knife in a clip point, clip point version. Great sheath, by the way. Uh, just rest assured the sheaths are all awesome here. Uh, but this is just your classic camp knife from the late 1800s, early 1900s, and then continued all the way through. And then we can see its lineage through the Buck series, like the 119 and those knives. Um, this is also the sort of knife from which the K-Bar uh, sprung in World War II, I guess. Um, so just a classic American clip point belt knife. Uh, in this case, as I mentioned, the Bark River Knives Boon II. Uh, I really, I, I love this knife on so many different levels. Uh, one, it's a clip point. It's a beautiful clip point. One of my favorite blade shapes. It's got the stack leather handle. It's got the, um, the the guard and the um the guard and the um pommel that remind me of uh, a knife we used to have when i was a kid growing up that was very storied to me i'll spare you the story right now uh but this has all of those ingredients and and then it has this sort of historical pre fancy uh aesthetic that just I don't know, rings out to me. So this would be number two. This would be for around the camp and for, um, you know, all everyday chores that this the Buck 110 couldn't handle. And then for what the Boone 2 couldn't handle, I would have this. Let me just show the water-treated sheath before I remove it. The Shining Mountain Bowie by Bark River Knives. Now, this is a... Uh, classic designed Bowie, uh, very similar to the one featured in, um, especially when you look at the blade and the and the guard. Very similar to the knife featured in Inglorious Bastards that Brad Pitt carried around. In his case, he had a a, a stag handle, a stag crown handle on it, but a very same blade shape with the um, with the spine that arches up towards the clip. And then with a the short break and then the long uh, ricasso area and the widening belly, just an outstanding. I mean, it almost looks like a pirate cutlass, uh, but, but again, you have this uh, stacked leather handle uh, on the Boone too. This is blackened stacked leather on the, um, on the Bowie here, the shining mountain Bowie. This is called antiqued stacked leather. So made to look old, obviously. Um, Every time I put it in and out of the sheath, it gets uh, oil on it because I oiled it at one point and it stayed impregnated in the sheath. Uh, but there it is. Very sharp. This is just back to me. It was on loan and got used as a camp knife, I guess, uh, for making fires and stuff. And uh, wow, what a great knife. This is uh, A2 steel. And this is 3V steel. And this is 420. So, you know, a, a couple of different steels. But this is my classic uh running from the house don't know if i'm ever going to return uh combination here so you got the old school stacked leather shining mountain bowie by bark river you have the old school stacked leather uh a3 boon 2 and then you have the uh the wood handled wooden brass handled uh buck 110 as your super steel super ultra modern locking folder so uh that is the classic combo what do you think of that do you have some sort of classic combo? What do you think of when you think of classic knives? Do you think of this kind of thing, this sort of proto K bar? I, I do. I, I often, you know, that's the image that comes to mind is guys in flannel smoking pipes around the campfire with those kind of knives around their belt. And they're talking about some something that they damn near shot in last year's hunt or or something like that. Next is, I'm calling this one, this second to last combo here. I'm calling this the Strictly Tactical 
combo. Okay, so you have to leave your house for some reason or other. You're not sure if you're going to return, but you're no, you know you're going into an urban environment, an, a hostile urban environment. So what do you bring? Okay. This was a fun one to come up with, as you may imagine. But uh, for Folder, this is what I this is what I decided on. You're all black, Emerson, Tiger. Now, why? Okay, all black. You're going into a hostile urban environment. You might need to bring out your knife, but not be seen. Um, so the black always is better for that. All you get is the glint off of that considerable edge. Um, very, very uh, effective blade shape. It's got the point right down the center line. It's got a nice big belly for slashing, uh, but for utility, it does have a nice uh, straight there for the first half of the blade. Uh, outstanding in reverse grip. The ergonomics are great. And then, of course, the main feature, you have that wave on the blade. So if you're in this hostile urban environment and you have to suddenly bring your folder to bear, boom, you just pop it open using the the wave and you're good to go. So the first knife would be the Emerson All Black Tiger. Second, you're going to need some sort of medium sized fixed blade on your hip uh, so that you can, if you need to get, uh, you know, if you're tackled to the ground or whatever, you know, whatever the scenario is, you're going to need a medium sized fixed blade knife. But since this is all tactical and it's a hostile urban environment on your waist, you're going to want this. This is your JB Knives Ditch Pick. This knife has been getting a lot of press on this show recently because it's just terrifically awesome. Uh, it fits in your waistband using the ulti clip really nicely, and then you can sort of cant it in whatever direction you want. I want to get a little slice of inner tube to put there so it doesn't get too worked out of position and unscrew the screw, uh, but you can draw it and have it immediately in reverse grip like this. So uh, this is a double-edged, also blackened, except for those edges, so that uh, you can sneak up on the sentries you're taking out or whatever the situation is in this hostile urban environment. Uh, this little very thin, very capable ditch pick in double edge is going to be riding at 3 o'clock on your waistband. So as you can see, it is smaller even than the folding knife, but I would argue extremely capable okay so what's your larger fixed blade going to be maybe it's uh, kept tucked in your backpack for uh, times when you have to pull it out and put it on your belt or maybe you just keep it there and it's nice and light and you can uh, you can kind of hide it with a longer coat so it's it's a fixed blade it's a big fixed blade but it's not that big you're going to be carrying this in the chattanooga leatherworks sheath you're going to be carrying your spartan harzy dagger Made by Spartan Blades, designed by the great and powerful Bill Harsey Jr., you have this gorgeous dagger. This is for, well, whatever you're going to need it for. This is a an all-business type knife. This is not your survival knife. Remember, you're in a hostile urban environment. You're not going to need this for making kindling and that kind of thing. Uh, if you need to do that for whatever reason, well, you'll you'll use your Emerson. This is here for hostile urban engagements. So these are your three knives. Uh, the the S35VN dagger. Uh, it's a it's a six inch blade by uh, right six inch uh, uh, by Spartan Blades and designed by Bill Harsey. You've got the JB knife and tool ditch pick for those extreme situations, and then of course. For utility and for quick draw uh, uh, folding knife purposes, you have an Emerson Tiger. So that is your strictly tactical, uh, out the door, not sure if you're going to be returning a uh, knife combination, headed towards a hostile urban environment. This, this by the way, yeah, uh, this is as cool as it looks. I, I have to guarantee that. And I want to get now the Les George dagger from Harzy Blades. I mean, from uh, Spartan Blades. I think that would be a great collection to have. A little sub-collection of daggers from Spartan Blades. You're saying, Bob, Bob, you're getting greedy now, Bob. All right, so here's my last one. 
can barely reach it. So many knives so far away. All right, here we go. So my last combination is, I'm calling it tactical, tr I mean, not tactical. I'm calling it trusted and true. Now, these are knives that I have used or uh, in one degree or other or have maximum faith in. Uh, first, in my pocket, in the front right pocket, would be this outstanding, amazing AD20 by Demco knives. We all know this knife. It's just an outstanding folding knife. Super, super strong. 20 CV steel on very robust blade stock, yet still comes down to a screaming, screamingly sharp razor's edge. Extremely ergonomic G10 handle that feels great in a variety of grips. Here, here, even feels good in this sort of reverse chest pull grip and is also very, very nice in reverse grip if you need to punch into something. That's a 20 CV blade. And uh, of course, it features the shark lock. Very strong lock, but also wins on the fun. You know, uh, Nut and Fancy always had his first type of cool and his second type of cool. The first type of cool was the cool that is all about utility, just a great design for utility. And second kind of cool is just cool, cool, the cool factor. Wow, that's really fun to fidget with, or that looks really cool. So this has both types of cool, the first type of cool and the second kind of cool. So for sure, the trusted and true uh, would be the right here, the, the AD20 by Demco Knives. Now, also designed by Andrew Demko is a cold steel. This is the Recon 1 XL Tanto. This is the only combination that features two folders instead of two fixed blades. And in this case, with that triad lock that the uh, Recon 1 has, it's almost like a fixed blade, right? We know it's very, very, very strong. But on this, you get five and a half inches of uh, XHP steel, hollow ground, super sharp, with a very tough uh, puncturing tip there, but it folds into a small, you know, seven inch package. So really when it's open, you have, let's see here, you have uh, a 12 inch knife when it's open and you can grip way back here on the handle and have the reach of a 12 inch knife here. So in this combination, I have chosen two folding knives because uh, like Lynn Thompson says, you can do small blade tasks with a big blade, but you can't do big blade tasks with a small blade. So uh, this med the, uh, the medium sized knife here, which is the Recon 1 XL, can cover both bases beautifully in this case. So the small knife is the 8020, the medium knife is the Recon 1. And then basically sticking with this uh, Lynn Thompson oriented theme, definitely trusted and true. And you can tell by just looking at this blade is my old trail master. Now I would choose maybe a new trail master in a, in a new blade steel, but this is an old, I think SK, what the hell is this? Carbon V carbon five carbon V steel, uh, uh, trail master that has been through the mill. I have beaten on this knife. It has done a lot of work in the backyard, but even before that, it was my, when I would go camping, which was somewhat rare, but it would be my camping knife. Uh, I got lost in the woods around Lake George with that knife. Um, lots of little adventures with that knife. And uh, uh, I love it. It works great. It might be an older steel, but it man, it just keeps going. Uh, I just do have to figure out how to get this sap off. I know people have told me different solutions and they haven't worked, I got to say. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Uh, but uh, you, you can see a little bit of history in this blade. And then also you can see on this handle how worn away this um, rubberized checkered handle is right here from where it's gotten so much wear. So my trusted and true, tried and true grouping here is the 8020, the Recon 1 XL in Tanto Point, and then the old Trailmaster 
by Cold Steel, that very super capable and quite awesome Bowie knife. So there you have it, people. I know it's a, it's been a burning question. Bob, what would you carry if you had to run out the door and didn't think you could come back and could take three knives and have five different scenarios? Well, the, those are them. And I have to say, uh, in terms of aesthetics purely, and, you know, I like talking about that. I like the camping. I mean, I like the uh, old school, I think the best, with the Buck 110, the Boone 2 on your hip, and the Shining Mountain Bowie. Just a great combination. So hopefully uh, hopefully you enjoy that. If you want to if you want to take a look at the show notes for this show and find out all the stuff I've been blabbing about, go to the knifejunkie.com and then go to the knifejunkie.com slash 261. 261 is the episode number uh, for this show. Any episode uh, you want to look at has a number associated. You can just go to the knifejunkie.com slash and put in that number and it will take you directly there. Uh, be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives when we do our Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway of the Finch Devil's Finger. Please be there uh, or be square and join us and join the conversation. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, Please, I beg of you, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.